In a world where school is overwhelming, social lives flourishing, and hormones run rampant, you still need sleep. But how does sleep onset occur? Let's go back a little. First, a quick history lesson. A long time ago, no one was sure if sleep was brought about by the absence of sensory stimuli or by something actively promoting sleep. Mysteries of this sleep switch were first unraveled by scientist Baron Constantine von Economo. During World War I, the world was swept with a pandemic called encephalitis lethargica, which is a viral infection of the brain that causes a prolonged state of sleepiness in most individuals. By studying individuals with this viral infection, Von Economo predicted a wake-promoting area in the posterior hypothalamus and a sleep-promoting region in the preoptic nucleus. Studies over subsequent years have proved Von Economo's predictions to be correct. To fully understand this sleep switch, we're going to break down the neurological basis of wakefulness and sleep onset into a few simple steps. Neurotransmitters are endogenous chemicals that transmit a signal from one neuron to a target cell across a synapse. They can have either excitatory or inhibitory effects on their target cells. In this short instructional video, neurotransmitters will be displayed as cheerful actors. These neurotransmitters are secreted in various locations in the brain. Places that are specialized for secreting a specific neurotransmitter during a specific environmental condition are called nuclei. In neuroscience, nuclei are clearly distinguishable masses of cells. To understand how we fall asleep, we first need to understand how we stay awake. We do this by a system called the Ascending Reticular Activating System, or the ARAS for short. There are two primary branches of the ARAS. One goes through the thalamus to activate the cerebral cortex. The second bypasses the thalamus and activates various areas of the brain and the cerebral cortex. Let's take a look at the first branch of the ARAS. The pedunculopontine tegmental nuclei, or PPT, which is located in the midbrain, is cholinergic, meaning it secretes acetylcholine. A close neighbor of the PPT in the midbrain is the laterodorsal tegmental nuclei, or LDT. It also secretes the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The thalamus has been called the gateway to the cortex, because a large majority of sensory stimuli enter the thalamus before activating various cortical areas. In order for these signals to make it through to the cerebral cortex, in an active and desynchronized manner, the thalamus needs to be excited to a certain threshold. Acetylcholine neurotransmitters assist in exciting the thalamus, allowing sensory stimulus to pass through to the cortex. All in all, everyone's happy. This diagram depicts the first branch of the ARAS and what has happened thus far. In red, the LDT and PPT have activated the thalamus, clearing the way for thalamocortical sensory transmission. Now for the second branch of the ARAS. This branch of the ARAS originates in the upper brainstem and the caudal hypothalamus. The nuclei in this second branch consist of a series of monaminergic cells that project to the basal forebrain, lateral hypothalamus, and the cerebral cortex. The locus ceruleus, or LC, of the medulla secretes norepinephrine, which acts as an excitatory neurotransmitter in the ARAS. The Ralph nuclei of the midbrain secrete the neurotransmitter 5-HT, or serotonin, which also acts as an excitatory neurotransmitter. The ventral periaqueductal gray matter, or VPAG, is a collection of cells that secrete the neurotransmitter dopamine, The tuberomammillary nucleus, or TMN, of the caudal hypothalamus secretes the neurotransmitter histamine. The lateral hypothalamus area, or LHA, not only receives input from these nuclei, but contributes to exciting the cerebral cortex by secreting the large peptide called orexin. The LHA also secretes melatonin concentrating hormone, which is not displayed in this video. Like the LHA, the basal forebrain, or BF, also receives input from these nuclei and contributes to the excitation of the cerebral cortex. 
The basal forebrain secretes acetylcholine and GABA. GABA is not displayed in this video. All of these chemicals contribute to an active, wake state brain by exciting the cerebral cortex. When we are awake, cortical activity is desynchronized, as shown by the lack of rhythm in these neurotransmitters. Characteristics of a desynchronized waking brain are low amplitude, high frequency EEG waves. This diagram depicts the second branch of the ARAS. Together, the LC, RALF, VPAG, TMN, LHA, and BF send excitatory connections to surrounding brain areas and the cerebral cortex, contributing to an active brain state. Together, these two branches make up the ARAS. Now, for how we chemically fall asleep. The onset of sleep is mainly due to the actions of the ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, or the VLPO, of the rostral hypothalamus. This nucleus secretes the neurotransmitters GABA and galanin. Both act as inhibitory neurotransmitters on all of the nuclei and areas of the ARAS. When GABA acts on the nuclei previously described, their activity is significantly reduced, therefore decreasing cortical activity and producing behavioral sleep. This is what Von Economo described as a sleep active system, because the VLPO is actively promoting sleep. This diagram depicts how the ARAS is turned off. The VLPO works to inhibit and reduce the activity of the brain areas and nuclei discussed in the previous section. Thank you for watching this week's broadcast of The Pathway to Sleep, brought to you by Afterglow Films. Tune in next week to learn how the brain switches from non-REM to REM sleep. Until then, happy sleeping.